Um, really great to have opportunity to share a bit about kind of my experience in innovation. Um, I know it will touch probably more on what we've been doing in the innovation space and slightly less on Agile, but hopefully you'll find it really interesting. Um, I think just listening to the previous speaker, really what I want to share with you is some of the things that I've learned personally in having worked in innovation the last couple of years. Um, and it touches a bit more around the kind of culture and people and how you can drive it. So really keen to make this a bit more of a discussion. I mean, please feel free to jump in, ask any questions, you know, add your, your thoughts. Um, I think this is kind of a, a fairly new space and it'll be really great to hear if you've got any ideas. But really with today, what I wanted to chat to you about is can you use openness to drive innovation? Um, and I think one of the things that we're seeing is that you know, the pace of change in the world today is incredibly fast. I mean, working at a bank, you know, we're faced not with just with how can we get what our customers want there faster, um, but technology is changing at a really rapid pace and our requirements, certainly from regulators, force us to change a lot. So really, what can we do to speed things up and can openness be one of those things that, that can help drive those change? So I guess one of the things that I wanted to just put to you all on, and I don't know if you share these, but you know, we, there are a lot of um, challenges that we face um, in large corporate organizations, particularly, we have a lot of reinventing the wheel. Um, we're not really necessarily good at sharing or reusing things. Um, we don't have places where people can easily go and find things that they could reuse. And certainly, you know, and I think, you know, if you have worked in any large organization, there are lots of silos, you know, we don't have a, a great way to collaborate. Um, but also for individuals in the organization, um, how, how do we help them collaborate and learn new skills and help them pivot to where we need to be to meet the pace of change in the world today? Um, also, by and large, large organizations, the incentives are focused on outputs rather than outcomes. So how can we shift some of that? Um, and so what this does is create an inability to innovate quickly, so we tend to do things slowly and the ability to scale is quite challenging. Um, so I guess what I wanted to bring to you tonight is just some thoughts on, you know, what can we learn from open source and how can this help us in large organizations? And I think certainly the, you know, my experience over the last couple of years is that, you know, like the internet, open source has certainly revolutionized the world. Um, you know, you wouldn't have thought we were just talking about mainframes. I mean, there we've got Linux running on mainframes and who would have thought that you would have community of developers across the world build something for free that now large organizations use. Um, and I think the power of it, very much like the power of the internet, has been around how do you um, democratize access to information, which is the internet. And I think open source has been about how do you democratize access to software. Um, and I think how they've gone about it is really interesting and exciting. And I think there's lots that we can learn as large organizations and to see how we can apply this. Um, I think the other thing, and I think this is a really the thing that's you know, been really powerful for me, is that what has been so successful about open source and getting all of those you know, people to collaborate around something is that people have the opportunity to work on something that is impactful, but it's also meaningful for them. And I think it's one of the things that we've looked to do, you know, certainly with our um, initiatives in the kind of inner sourcing space is that how do you enable people to, you know, maybe they are, you know, stuck in a project that may not necessarily be something that they're interested in, but how do you create some other vehicles where people can get involved in something that is meaningful for them, but also impactful to the organization. And I think certainly some of the practices and principles around open source um, are tried and tested and are a great way of doing that, particularly when we look at you know, how those communities form. Um, one of the things that I've learned is that, you know, again, you can't um, tell people go and innovate. Um, you know, we have to create an environment to enable innovation and infrastructure is key to that. And certainly, you know, one of our, our journeys as, as an organization and, you know, that I've been involved in helping is making sure that we have in place some infrastructure to help people collaborate. Um, and particularly being able to collaborate asynchronously. And I guess just drawing in the synergies again with open source and how people have been able to collaborate there. I mean, you've got developers across the world who are working together, you know, to build the same thing. And so what we've tried to make sure is that again, like, you know, we have 
colleagues spread the length and breadth of this country. We have colleagues in many other geographic locations. How do we make sure that we're able to connect to digital collaboration platforms that enable people to work together on the same things, but maybe at different times? Um, however, what I would say is that, you know, tooling is great, but it's not the be all and end all. I think the hardest thing, and I'll touch on that just now, is how do you get people to form new habits to work in a different way? And I think that's the, the kind of harder nut to crack. Um, the other thing is sort of, you know, what I've learned and kind of looking in our journey and how we've looked at openness is it's not just what you do, it's how you do it. And so, you know, we've set up, you know, some programs looking at how to drive, you know, use of open source, looking at inner sourcing, um, how do we get people to collaborate and work in a very different way. Um, and part of how we did that needed to be by design being open. And so, you know, when you look at culture, you know, if you look at innovation, you can't just tell people to innovate, you need to create that environment to do that. And so, you know, that's been in everything that we do, you know, from the tooling, making sure that, you know, how do we make that as frictionless for people to access as possible? So if I can go onto the internet and access GitHub and, you know, access some code off that, just by simply logging in in a few minutes, we need to make sure that for our colleagues inside an organization, that same process is as frictionless as possible and everyone has access to it. Um, so, so that was kind of a key part of what we looked at. Another really important thing was making sure um, that we enabled an open um, environment for people to have conversations and to talk about things. And so, you know, again, looking at some of the challenges we face in, you know, in any or large organization, when you have big silos or many people to collaborate, how can you create that network effect? One of our big challenges in the world today is that we're getting more and more complex problems to solve. I mean, certainly for us as a bank, you know, we've got requirements from regulators, we've got customers' needs that we need to meet. Those make for very complex um, challenges to solve. We can't solve it alone. And so that, you know, being open and being able to create those really effective networks, you know, through communities and be it communities of practice or, you know, people getting together to, you know, um, share knowledge or build things together in an open way. It creates really constructive communities that run throughout the organization that then help you certainly innovate and do things faster. Um, because at the end of the day, it's all about being able to connect the right people to solve these complex problems to deliver value for the customer as quickly as possible. Um, so that's been really important. I mean, we, we've, you know, we've set up some things like having, you know, webinars where it's again, it's about, you know, learning, it's about creating a platform where people who are in these communities or who are working on things can share what they're doing so that other people know about it. Um, and so very much taking, again, those principles and practices kind of on open source and how it's been applied. I think one of the best, well, I suppose my learning and kind of being on this journey and being involved in this is that it does take time. And I think in any organization where you're trying to, you know, pivot people to a new way of working, it's building those new habits. And that's why I go like as much as you can have ceremonies, um, as much as you can um, have tools to help it. At the end of the day, it's about how do we all move from things that we've been used to doing, you know, maybe for a long time to picking up a new habit so that, you know, maybe I don't go to my email first thing in the morning, you know, maybe I go to a collaboration tool and that, you know, how do I make sure that that becomes my, um, my place of interaction rather than using email as my backlog. Um, and so, you know, I don't think we've necessarily cracked that. I mean, I think we're working really hard on, on that. And I think part of that comes down to how you incentivize people, you know, how you get some top-down permissive messaging to support that. But at the end of the day is that, you know, how do we, how, you can only innovate if everyone is working in a different way. We can only move at speed um, if we're doing that in a different way. And that requires all of us forming new habits. Um, and I think the interesting thing with using openness to drive change is that everybody wins. I mean, ultimately, you know, we're, organizations are there looking to make sure that we can deliver solutions, um, well, products and services that our customers want as quickly as possible. But equally, we are all individuals and organizations. And so how do we how do we win as part of that process? And so certainly by having these mechanisms and being able to participate in communities to learn new things, to get involved in projects that you might find more impact and meaningful um, is really powerful. I mean, I'll just share, you know, one of the 
um, our colleagues. I mean, he was an engineer, you know, pr providing support for, him, for some of our back-end systems, very traditional systems, but was hugely interested in data science. Um, you know, he, he's been in the organization a long time. And, and so how do you provide the opportunity for somebody like that to pivot their career while still kind of covering what they need to do? Because obviously we've got requirements as an organization to, to deliver the services that we need to do. But through, you know, the Our Open um, initiatives, you know, through some of the communities that we've got set up, it's been really amazing for somebody like that who's able to then get involved with other people who are data scientists to pick up new skills, to get involved in some projects on the side. And so ultimately fulfill his you know, new dreams about being able to pivot his career where he wants to go. And I think that's where innovation gets really exciting um, and certainly change in organizations get really exciting where you can take your learnings from the past but have opportunities to pivot and do things differently in the future. Um, so that's why I go at all when, you know, the organization wins, you know, we, we retain kind of knowledge. Um, it's really, you know, becomes an exciting place to work um, where you are, are, in, are able to drive where you want to go and not necessarily just by luck or by chance of where you end up. So that was kind of a bit of a whirlwind, which is just around kind of openness to drive change. I mean, I think certainly in my experience, in the innovation space, I've tried many different things. We've tried teams that kind of have been set up on the side trying to do, drive innovation. I mean, you know, that's had some success, not necessarily scalable success, but it is important to have focus. Um, you know, we've looked at this and I think this is really exciting because this is how you start to make scale in the organization and, and wider change of people being able to innovate and participate in something new.